Cinema lighting can be confusing because of how many different types of products there are out there. In the same way that you'd use wide lenses and telephoto lenses for different types of shoots, you also want to use different types of lighting fixtures for different uses. So with that said, let's go through the six most common types of lighting fixtures and when you'd use each of them. Number one, single source lights. Single source lights are called single source because, well, they come from one source. There's only one light on the fixture. Examples of single source lights include the Aperture 120D or the Mini 20. When undiffused, single source lights are hard and have clear, crisp edges. Generally speaking, you want to use single source lights when you want a strongly defined shadow, a harsher light, or a more directional light. Now, you can diffuse a single source light for a softer effect and turn it into an area light, which will also soften the shadows and the light's quality. This is very common in corporate interviews and in portrait photography. Number two, multi-source lights. Multi-source lights have multiple light sources on them. Some multi-source panels, like the LS1, can have up to 1,536 sources on them. These types of lights generally have stronger outputs than their single source counterparts. It's not a direct correlation, but generally speaking, the more sources of light, the brighter the light will be. Now, some filmmakers actually don't prefer multi-source lights because of the multi-shadow effect that comes with having too many sources of light. Now, to counteract this effect, most filmmakers and photographers will diffuse multi-source lights through a silk sheet or frost to eliminate the shadows and make it appear as a single source. Bouncing a multi-source light is another effective way to do this. Still, multi-source lights have many useful applications in filmmaking and photography as they are some of the most powerful lights in the industry. Number three, volume lights. Volume lights, like china balls and space lights, add soft, luminous lighting to your overall scene. Volume lights have a very soft wrap around your subject and it can add lots of overall fill to your setup. Now, because volume lights are so omnidirectional, they have a huge variety of uses. Many photographers and filmmakers will use space lights to light their green screens as they can provide extremely clean and even lighting to a background. You can also try using an array of volume lights over a light psych or for a portrait shoot where you want soft beauty lighting. The array of volume lights will mimic the effect of one super large soft source from above, ensuring that your light is clean and without shadows. Number four, area lights. An area light is the opposite of a single source light. Area lights are achieved either through bouncing or diffusing a single or multi-source light and adding to its size. An area light generally has a wider beam angle and can illuminate an entire room or environment. Soft boxes, silks, and foam core bounce boards are all common ways you can turn your hard light into an area light. Area lights are soft and have shadows that are much less harsh than a single source light. While it's easy to make a hard spotlight into an area light with a few tools, it's not that easy to make an area light into a hard light unless you move the light really far away to have it seem like being a single source, but then that makes your relative size much smaller and you would almost never do this. Number five, tube lights. Tube lights are sort of similar to area lights. They're an array of LEDs or a single fluorescent that are usually housed in a frosted plastic tube that provides very soft lighting. Many photographers and DPs will actually take two or three of these tubes and shape them into squares or triangles for diva lighting. Now because tube lights are smaller, they tend to have less output than their larger or single source counterparts, but because they're more mobile and easily hidden, they have many practical uses. In addition, many tube lights nowadays are RGB, making them extremely versatile as effect lights both on screen and off, allowing you to make bars of lights in club scenes or music videos, allowing for some really fun and stylized practical. Speaking of practicals, number six is practical lights. Practical lights are the lights that are visible in your scene and are part of your project's narrative. Practical lights can be as simple as an open-faced tungsten bulb, lamps, the screen of a TV set, candles, a Christmas tree, a chandelier, the list goes on. While lighting your scene well is very important, practicals can add visual interest and add to the believability of your film. Many DPs choose to replace on-set practicals with film lights, such as using a tube light to simulate a fluorescent, or having a large single source daylight balance light to simulate the moon. Whatever the case, practical lights are the lights that are part of the screen and the narrative of your film and help add depth to your overall lighting setup. So there you have it, the six most common types of lights. I'm Nares from The 18. Leave a comment below with your favorite type of light to use on set. The best answer will win an Aperture M9, which by the way, is a multi-source LED light. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Follow Aperture on Facebook, Instagram, The Works. I'm Nares from The 18. Stay creative.